How's it going? Today, I'm going to talk about halfway up the mountain, uh, the errors of preconceived uh, claims to enlightenment. Now, I've read quite a few relative to the word few books on Buddhism. And this one, I would say, is definitely under the category of Zen Buddhism and mainly focuses on how we can limit our ego from taking over on our spiritual journey. For a lot of spiritual activists, we can become over-consumed with the idea of being a spiritual being. We can become over, you know, complacent to thinking that we are so high and mighty because we've read a few spiritual novels here and there that uh, we like to think we already are there and we know everything. <laughs> we, as in the greater collective we. Um, for me, though, personally, I really appreciated this book. It brought me into a clear state of what it is I personally have to work through to make my way through the spiritual practice. It goes deeply into the roots of how we as spiritually searching people can find that there is worth in the spiritual practice of humbleness and patience. So, this uh, it was a pretty thick book, you know, there's plenty to read about it. There's plenty of side notes and quotations and things like that, you know. Uh, but what I really loved about this book is that it drew me in and kept me reading through the very end notes of the book, you know. It kept me tied and attracted to what it was teaching. And after I finished reading this book, I felt that I came out on more clarity of where I am at on my spiritual journey. And uh, I definitely highly recommend it before I get into it a little more. You know? Though, I would say that it can come off a little bit like putting off the idea of enlightenment. Enlightenment is not a material thing. It's not something you can have or grasp onto it. What this book is saying is that your enlightenment comes when you become an open conduit of it. It's not something you're going to be able to attach to or have. And when you have it, it doesn't mean you will stay there having it. It just means you've made the opportune to experience it for that moment. And with everything, nothing is guaranteed. So if you can take the time to realize the values of what you have in this moment, to realize the worth in this experience here and now, you can take a step back and not let your ego run amok in the experience, but instead realize that if you do have an ego in your spiritual life, that's all right. Because what this book was saying is the ego becomes the offering what you put into the fire of spiritual worth for you. So people who don't have much of an ego and choose a spiritual path can become somewhat unrooted in who they are. They're not sure who they are. And that's all right to a point, but you also need to focus on the lower chakras just as much as the upper chakras. Your muladhara, your svadhisthana, and your uh, manipura chakra all need to be, you know, fueled just as much as your anahata, your heart, your throat, your communication, vishuddha, and your imagination, ajna, and the sahasarara, the crown. Through that, you create a balance, a peaceful balance. And you don't attach to so much of the idea of you being the only one who's ever achieved anything. So find it in your heart to see that everyone is here at the same time place in this moment with you. We are all working through this. And some people are just a little more open than others to receiving what it is that they're trying to accumulate. And some people are so disillusioned by their thoughts of knowledge, their ideas of Gnosticism, where they're so caught up in that they have already found the idea, they have found the truth, and they're trying to share it with everyone and that's the only way. Well, I would say there's many ways to reach that same point 
of infinite voidness or awareness, whatever it is. So, this one will go into Alan Watts. Like, even here it shows a comment on Alan Watts. You know we want, went through all of this with Alan Watts. God knows nobody did more for mystical studies, especially Zen, than Alan. And I don't know a single person of my generation interested in transcendence who hasn't, wasn't touched deeply by the man. Nobody could write like Alan Watts. Nobody. But it was just that, words. It was only the end of his life that he rather superstitiously began to admit the core of Zen is, in fact, a Zazen. But by then, most of the people who began with Alan were now with Suzuki, Roshi, Sazaki, or Soen, Katagari, or Baker. That is, they were actually practicing, actually working on spiritual transformation. See, even there, I personally love Alan Watts. You know, great, great mentor of spiritual philosophy. But he himself calls himself a spiritual entertainer. So that means he's giving you the idea, showing you pictures, so that you can do the work. Don't, this is not other people can't do your work for you. You have to do the work. Once you see what it is you're working towards, then you make the effort. Nobody else can do it for you. So, this book, basically halfway up the mountain, is talking about how we are on the spiritual path. Most people on the spiritual path are only a little far up on the mountain. They're about this high up on this huge mountain. And they like to tell everybody about how far they've gotten on their spiritual journey and because they're that far up. But what you're really making an effort towards is making it all the way to the top of the mountain, coming back down, and then being a guide for others to reach the top of that mountain. Or traveling from mountain to mountain range and seeing the world. Not just that. That is the metaphor for enlightenment. You know, you can go up halfway the mountain, create a beautiful uh, temple for your zazen and your practices of spirituality, and that's great. Though people will come, and they will want to keep going. They won't want to just stop there. They'll want to keep going up that mountain. And you encourage them. Don't try to hold them back. Encourage them to make it to the top of the mountain. And if they do come back after they've reached that point, then welcome them as one of your own, as a teacher. They're there now, too, to help others find the way up the mountain. But honestly, what, you know, a profound book for those who can become too attached to thinking that they've already had completion and embodiment in this life. You are an eternally magnificent, wonderful being. There's no doubt your spirit is beyond immaculate conception. I couldn't even begin to describe, but this book just brings the physical back into realization of its humanity and its humbleness and its meekness. And anybody that's interested in learning a little more about Zen, a little more about how you can make, it doesn't just give tell you why you're wrong. It also gives the path that you too can make to start shifting your mind towards more love and compassion in this life. So, you know, read another little piece here. It gives a lot of different spiritual teachers like Baba and uh, Roshi and um, Suzuki and all these people, you know, that were of our time considered spiritual, you know, masters. But they too will tell you that they know nothing, a lot of them. They'll, if they're a true teacher, a lot of them will just tell you they know nothing. And you have to find it on your own. So, let's see here. So Sanskrit word saha means to endure, to go patiently through hardships without rebelling. The process of disillusionment is an unquestionable, painful process at times. Genuine spiritual life has never been popular and never will be because most people are unwilling to open to and accept pain. Ray says the first time he ever heard this teacher talk, Trungpa Rinpoche spoke about suffering. He was the first person I ever met who acknowledged how bad things really are and how I thought to myself, that's it, that's what I want. I want to find out what's going on here and explore it. According to Ray, their tradition places a great emphasis on Buddha's first noble truth that life is suffering and not because anyone wants to suffer, but because suffering is what is true to life. So, this book will go in to tell you that 
And this is from their expression that enlightenment is not a freedom from suffering. It is the realization that suffering is and your ability to transmute it into a grace. So I definitely recommend Halfway Up the Mountain, The Error to Premature Claims to Enlightenment. It's got all these wonderful teachers here. This video is getting a little long, so I'm going to call it a wrap there. But Halfway Up the Mountain, good choice. Have a lovely rest of your day. Namaste.